NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg said on Wednesday that a missile blast in Poland that killed two people near the border with Ukraine was probably not a deliberate attack by Russia. However, they bear the ultimate responsibility. Our preliminary analysis suggests that the incident was likely caused by a Ukrainian air defense missile fired to defend Ukrainian territory against Russian cruise missile attacks. But let me be clear, this is not Ukraine's fault. Russia bears ultimate responsibility as it continues its illegal war against Ukraine. NATO Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg speaking to journalists in Brussels. In an address Tuesday evening at his Florida estate, Donald Trump has announced he will seek a second term in the White House. Many Republican strategists were urging Trump to delay his announcement, this after the Republicans' poorer-than-expected showing in the midterm elections. If successful, he would be the second U.S. president in history to serve non-consecutive terms. A projectile has hit a tanker carrying gas oil approximately 240 kilometers off the coast of Amman. The Israeli-owned shipping company that operates the vessel said on Wednesday, adding that there were no reports of casualties or any leakage of the cargo. It was not immediately clear who launched the projectile, though it is being reported it was a drone strike. More international aid is arriving in Ethiopia's Tigray region, entering a months-long block, ending a months-long blockade after the warring sides agreed to a ceasefire. Fred Harper reports from Addis Ababa. The news comes a day after two trucks of medical supplies from the International Committee of the Red Cross, or ICRC, reached Mekele, Tigray's regional capital. Over the weekend, military leaders from both sides reached an agreement laying out a roadmap for implementing the ceasefire, which was signed in Pretoria on November 2. The accord contains security guarantees for humanitarian workers and pledges the parties to facilitating unhindered humanitarian access to Tigray, although phone, internet and banking services have not yet been restored to the region. Fred Harzer for VOA News, Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. Authorities in Pakistan said Wednesday that militants had ambushed and killed at least six members of a provincial police force. The early morning attack took place in the Laki Marwat district in the country's northwest. A boisterous crowd welcomed pre- Brazilian president-elect Luis Inácio Lula da Silva on Wednesday as he began a series of public appearances and meetings at the UN Climate Summit being held in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt. His recent election represents a potentially huge shift in Brazilian environmental policy compared to his predecessor, under whom environmental agencies were weakened and he appointed forest managers from the agribusiness sector. Tele Trina is an indigenous climate activist. So for us, Lula being the new president it means hope. It means to be bring back Brazil to the international agenda for climate change. It means uh, having perspective for good actions when regarding the climate so and protection of the earth. So we are really optimistic. Upon winning the October elections, De Silva promised to move toward completely stopping deforestation. Qatari World Cup organizers have apologized to a Danish television station whose live broadcast from a street in Doha was interrupted by officials who threatened to break camera equipment. Tournament organizers acknowledged journalists from the TV2 channel were mistakenly interrupted late Tuesday. The incident five days before the World Cup starts revisits a sensitive subject for tournament organizers. They have denied claims that there are strict limits on filming in Qatar. 97-year-old former Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad is back again in the election race as the head of a new ethnic Malay alliance he calls a movement of the people.
Hi, thank you for watching. I hope the videos are useful for you. Please subscribe to my channel using the button below.